Another floody and bird flood uh, floody. <laughs> no, it's, it's not floody. It's flooded. I'm, I'm so sorry. Let, let's just pretend that didn't happen, shall we? Um. Anyway, moving on. Hello, it's Matt coming at you with another Planet Coaster Park Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the video and welcome to Lost Kingdom created by the master of Planet Coaster on console, the incredible Flooded Tombs. Now today's park was created on a next gen Xbox and as always if you do enjoy this video please make sure to leave a like, leave a subscribe if you are new and if you would like to have your park spotlighted then the Iron Gamers Discord link, the Iron Gamers will be up in that top corner right now. Now the description for this park reads, a fully themed adventure park, features five coasters, one of them built by Corvus, a river rapids and a dark ride plus three flat rides so a nice little short sweet description now quick disclaimer just before we hop into the park due to the way that flooded builds and the intricacies that he goes into i had to delete sections of the park after i'd looked at them just to stabilize the frame rate so if we're on a coaster and you see maybe some empty spots over in the distance that's not flooded that is me i promise but i am so excited to hop in so without further ado let's go in and have a look around shall we Right, so here we are in the park. So we've just come out of one of the tunnels onto this road layout. And yeah, just what I was saying just in that description. I've never had this before with any other park except the Blooded Park. So the previous one that I looked at, I had to do the same. I had to delete sections of the park as I was looking at them just to stabilize the frame rate because flooded and bertie go into so much detail with their parks when they collab i know this isn't a bertie park this is just a flooded by himself but normally flooded and bertie collaborate on their parks and the pair of them go into so much detail that the frame rate on the console just cannot keep up with it the frame rate just drops substantially and as we go through this tour you may well, just there, literally just as I said it, you will recognise that it does stutter a little bit. It's just crazy how much detail he goes into. There's a little shout out for Bertie just there, Bertie's Burgers. Yeah, the console can't keep up with their talent. It's absolutely crazy just how much detail they go into. I mean, just as with all of the previous parks, all of the backstage areas done here, all the back of house, so the main street would just be on the other side of there. You've got all the back of house stuff, back of house stuff, like over here. Everything is just so realistic. It feels like a genuine, fully functioning park. It truly does. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I love it. It's just absolutely mental. You've got a custom forklift truck just down there. Absolutely mental. I'd love coming and looking at Flooded's Parks. They blow me away every single time. You've got the ride just there, all the back of house stuff, the transfer track just back there. And then as we come down here, we've got some warehouses just down here. So, of course, I have to go and have a look inside because, of course, I do. The last time I looked in one of these, there was a little Easter egg, but not this time. No little melted snowman this time. No, nothing in any of them. But yeah, great job. Love this back of house stuff. Just adds so much more realism to a park. It makes it feel like a real place. And then you've got this big, expansive car park. I think the size car park is perfect for the size of the park in question. You can imagine this being full on a busy day. And then just as we come down here, we've got FTP. So that appears in every park, Flooded Tombs Presents. You've got the roundabout just there. There's so much detail just all outside of here. We haven't even hopped into the park itself yet. We've got all of the cones, all of the bollards. And then, of course, you've got the disabled parking just to the right there. And then just as we come down here, we'll have a look around here. What's this down here? So we've got the bay parking. I don't see that very often. So we'll hop over the zebra crossing. And we'll start heading down towards the actual 
park itself. And then look at this. Look how wide and expansive this is. You can just imagine like a couple of thousand people here first thing in the morning just excited to get into the park. All the little details. Even like the rope dividers that you've got here, the rope cues. And then all of the detailing around the booths. You've even got little pamphlets just inside, little brochures. And then you've got the guest services. You've even got the detailing just in the windows just there. And then just the floor, just everything. You're going to find throughout this tour, I'm just going to be gushing all the way through. I always do. You've got a little custom vending machine there. The crispy M&M's blue, because of course, and a Pepsi Max vending machine there. So much detail, so much custom assets throughout this park. And we have the Lost Kingdom. So let's come through the turnstiles. And I'll just oh, look at this. Just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Like, I just can't quite wrap my head around it. Like, whenever Floody and Bert... Flood, uh, Floody? Floody? <laughs> No, it's, it's not floody. It's flooded. I'm, I'm so sorry. Let, let's just pretend that didn't happen, shall we? Um, anyway, moving on. So anyway, we've got some pins and magnets there. Yep, great job. Little custom asset right there. <sighs> I was doing so well. Anyway, thank you for visiting. I think I should. Let's just exit while I'm here, shall I? Let's just move on. Carry on. So we've got another Pepsi machine there. We've got the lockers just over here. I've completely thrown myself off now. What's going on? Let's just let's just carry on like nothing happened. Oh dear. I love this main street. I absolutely love this main street. Just what's in front of us right there, all the ruins. You've got the gift shop just here. So let's have a look inside here. Oh, just the detail everywhere. I'm so conscious of just repeating myself constantly. I feel like I'm just just copy and paste the last spotlight commentary and just place it over this one. And I think it would still fit. We've got the Bean Cave Coffee. Try saying that five times fast. Bean Cave Coffee, Bean Cave Coffee, Bean... Okay, that's actually not too bad. That's, that's quite easy. Never mind. Right. I wish we could have guests in here, but the frame rate just absolutely tanks the second you try and have guests in the park. We've got the fast passes just there. And then we've got the flat ride just to the right. And look at this flat ride skin. Just for the exit alone. But I'm in danger of going right here, so that's not going to happen. Let's veer off to the left. Look at the ruins going around the river rapids. That is mental. You can just see the B&M coaster just off to the left. Wow. It just takes your breath away. I'm almost speechless. But don't worry, I won't be because I have to carry on talking. Otherwise, it's not entertaining. Just keep talking, Matty. Come on, come on. Right, let's carry on. So... Let's go left because, of course, we've got another staff area just here. So, another back of house, backstage area just over here. Got all the ventilation, the pallets just at the back, all the bins. And then just some staff car park back here. You got all the dumpsters just there, all the big bins. Yeah, incredible. Well, right. Anyway, we've got a lot to look at. So, come on. We've got five coasters to go on. We've got so much to look at. We can't dawdle. Come on. Oh, just as the B&M's just at the top there. Oh, there's a little bit of hang time just at the top there. You've got the peanut M&M's, so yellow. And what's this one? Oh, some fruit skittles. Oh, I love that one. I'm not allowed fruit skittles. They make me go hyper. Like, really hyper. You might think that I'm normally quite hyper and quite flamboyant and energetic a lot of the time. But when I have fruit skittles, I get even worse. Like, really bad. So I'm not allowed them. My mum banned me. I might be almost 40, but my mum banned me. 
So we've got the treble dancer just there, a flat ride just to the left. If you own an Xbox, go and download Flooded Parks. You owe it to yourself to do it. Because my spotlights genuinely do not do them justice. This may be a, what, 45 minute spotlight. But you could spend two hours in this park just taking in all of the details. A spotlight for a park such as this just doesn't do it justice. And you owe it to yourself to go and have a look. But we've got our first coaster. So we've got a B&M Wing Coaster Raider. So let's have a walk down the queue path. All the detailing all around here. Even your queue paths are always detailed. All They're always interactive. There's always loads to see and do down them. We come underneath the brake run. And <laughs> we literally walk right underneath the coaster. You've got some vending machines just on the exit. And then up we come. And then you can queue for the left wing or the right wing. We'll go, we'll go to the right wing. Right, over we go. And look at this station. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Wow. I love this. But anyway, first ride of the park. Let's do it. Enjoy, everybody. What an incredible first ride of the park. I mean, you've got that terrain forming just to the left there. It's just so good. It it almost feels a little bit redundant, me being here, trying to give... Like, I can't give feedback, can I? It's just a tour. That's all it is. I can't be like, you need to improve on this or anything like that. Because they're always perfect. Everything about Flooded Parks are always perfect. And, yeah, that coaster was sensational. Absolutely fantastic job. Super smooth all the way around. Loved everything about it. You've got the transfer track just back over here. So, there's the transfer tracks just inside there. Yeah, incredible job. An amazing first ride of the park. I absolutely loved it. But... We've even got the emergency exit just there, look. I love how you always do that on all of your rides. Whether that be a dark ride or a coaster, you've always got the access points for the staff and the maintenance. You've got the emergency exits dotted throughout for that realism. Again, making it feel like a genuine, authentic, real park. If somebody was to tell me... That this was a one-for-one -one recreation of an actual theme park somewhere in the world. I wouldn't question it. I wouldn't doubt it. Because they are that good. Yeah. Amazing. But anyway, right, let's carry on. So let's start heading over towards this B&M coaster, shall we? The B&M invert. So we've got a staff access area here for the B&M coaster. Look at that inversion right there. We've got a tunnel that goes off down there. We've got the security cameras. Well, let's come back down. Now let's just pretend that this isn't a pre-recorded video, shall we? And let's pretend for a second that I didn't 
walk past the entrance for the B&M coaster and then have to backtrack after going on the dark ride, shall we? Let's just pretend that doesn't happen. I mean, I could have edited it, so I didn't miss it, but it would have messed it all up. So we're just going to roll with it. So we'll walk down here. That loop right there, the momentum it keeps as it goes up and around that loop. I know there's a little bit of hang time at the top of that when we go on it, but I don't believe that wouldn't have been there if the park was actually open. I think the only reason the hang time is there is because it's in test mode. So, I mean, that's something that I can't give feedback on. You've got the little stairs just there. That's another thing that I've always noticed in your parks is the subtle use of elevation. In every park that you have done, they're never flat. There's just some little subtle elevation changes and you've had to put some steps or stairs there just to balance it out. And it works so well. And look at this inversion that goes right over the top of us here. Unfortunately, we're not going to be lucky and see it go over the top of us as we're here. But it looks absolutely incredible. So let's carry on. We're going to pretend that I haven't already walked past the entrance for the coaster. Stupid Matty. So we're going to walk down here and we'll come down towards the dark ride. And look how beautiful this is just with the foliage. And then of course the waterfall just over there. And we have the El Mirador. So we're going to swap that tonight because I believe this is how it's supposed to be done. Walk down the queue at night. So we'll walk down here. Quite eerie. Quite atmospheric as we walk down. Another great queue line once again. Down we come. Love this. It's just so ambient down here so atmospheric you've got another emergency exit just there and then you can queue for either the left side or the right side so we're going to go to the right side we'll go for a ride on both of them so both the right and the left hand side a little bit of juddering there once again the game struggling to keep up with the park and we've even got a dual operating booth down here Oh, juddering once again. But right, let's go for a ride on this, shall we? So enjoy, everybody.
Oh my god. I just, what do you say? Just sensational. I know there was a little tiny bit of clipping with the two cars actually bumping into each other. I, again, like, very much like the B&M coaster. I think that's a test issue. I believe that if the park was open and they were both operating normally, that wouldn't have happened. So just ignore that completely. That's probably a, my issue filming it. But I just... Wow. Again... Again, I can't give feedback. It was just absolutely sensational. All the way around, the triggered effects, all the set pieces that you'd had, just beautiful. And I got lost at this point and started getting scared. Um, it's at this point I wish that I had Moomin with me, because Moomin would have held my hand and told me it was all okay. I can't find the exit. Where is it? It's through here somewhere. Ooh, what feature? But I'm still lost. Where am I? It, it's around here somewhere. Let's just let's just carry on. It's okay, mate. Be brave. Be brave. I think this is toward the end. I think I'm going in circles. I'm not going to lie. There we go. There's the exit. It's all okay. We're fine. Let's just run up the stairs. Right. There we go. It's all okay. So. Oh, a little bit of juddering again. The juddering does stabilise the more I delete as we go around the park. But. Yeah, just amazing. All joking aside, I know I'm messing around a lot, but just incredible work. Again, flooded. I'm messing around because I just don't want to keep repeating myself. That's what it is. You exit through the shop here. You've got the security, like the beep, 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 beep things just as you walk through there. And we'll swap that back tonight and carry on. So we'll start heading towards the B&M coaster that I totally didn't miss earlier on in the spotlight. Oh, look at that inversion right there. How smooth it is as it goes over. To keep that momentum and have it as smooth as it is. So surrender your soul to the underworld. That's a bit dark. We took a little bit of a dark turn as we walk down here. We'll walk down here. You've got another emergency exit just there. And look how the ride comes right parallel to the queue line. And then you walk underneath the lift hill. And down we go towards the station. I like what you've done with the rocks. Just covering the pillars. Just there, you've got some ventilation on the roof. Another emergency exit right there. Yeah, I love this. Even more ventilation. And then we come to the actual station itself. And then just look at this for a station. All of the detailing. Absolutely insane. But anyway, let's go for a ride. Enjoy, everyone. That 
may possibly be one of the best B&M inverts I've been on in a spotlight in the entire two and a half years I've been going. It was fantastic. The theming, the layout, the momentum that it kept all the way around, just sensational. Absolutely brilliant, and I loved it. But anyway, right, let's start heading towards the River Rapids. So we're actually walking right underneath the River Rapids here, which is very cool. I like that, how you walk underneath it. And if we look left, so we've got the River Rapids queue line here. So let's have a walk down here. And then just like all the other queues so far, just the detailing around here is just sensational. As always, so difficult to not repeat myself at this point. It really is. Stop repeating yourself, my I, I can't help it. It's just so good. It's so good. But we've got a circular loading station down here. So we come underneath. And down we come. Oh, the game's struggling to keep up once again. Lag, frame rate. But anyway, right, let's hop on this log flume, shall we? So, log flume, River Rapids, enjoy!
what a dynamic and interactive river rapids there's so much to see as you were going around that it gave you some beautiful sights of the park and then the use of the rock work and the foliage around it you've got all of the detailing like all the water pumps and everything <sighs> don't don't repeat yourself my just just don't just don't it was just amazing again incredible just like the rest of it I think probably like everybody else who is watching this spotlight right now, I'm just in awe and don't really know how to sum up what I'm thinking because I'm just so blown away by it. I don't know how you manage to deliver every single time with everything that you create. There's a reason you are considered to be right up there with the best of the console you and albris i believe are probably the two best console planet coaster players and for good reason i've said it before i'm most likely gonna say it again i could play for 10 years and never reach this level ever your eye for detail is just on a whole new level incredible I, I'll, I'll just stop talking for the rest of the spotlight i'll just mute myself that's it i'm done just everybody can just watch and just take it in themselves you don't need me here to give anything i don't add anything to this <laughs> as we come down here so we've got three more coasters left to go on so what's this one ah right so this isn't a coaster so this kind of like just leads Back to where we were earlier on so if we turned left here this would take us back towards the park entrance again so yeah there we go so just making sure that i'm not missing anything because obviously you've got all these differing paths all connecting the park up so i don't want to miss anything we've got a pepsi machine just to the left there and then if we come up these stairs we come back up to the river rapids again so we'll come back down here and we've got this kitty coaster just here so let's go and find the entrance for that shall we see the game is struggling despite the fact that at this point i've deleted both the dark rides the entire car park the entire entrance and it's still over a hundred percent it's still over the limit and the game is still struggling to keep up that's how much is in this park. It's not quite 40,000. I think it's about 48,000 pieces. So it's not quite on the 50k limit. But despite that, the game is still struggling to keep up. But yeah, anyway, here we come. So we've got a kiddie coaster. So let's go for a ride. Enjoy. A really nice kiddie coaster i think that did exactly what it needed to kept up a really nice pace throughout it wasn't too extreme so for the younger visitors to the park they would be able to go on that yeah great job great layout really nice theming all the way around really like that amazing so out we come so if we went to the right that would take us back to the entrance again but i do want to have a quick look at the sign so we have the tailspin love that sign for the flat ride right there and then we've got the ftp toilet block we've got some blue skittles just to the left there and then we've got a spinning coaster right in front of us and then what's just to the right here and look at the detailing on this building here all the vines coming down, all the weeds coming through, all the foliage. 
we've got a food shop just here. So we've got tombs, tacos. We've got a little shout out to Corvus. And then we've got the Bertie's Burgers. Yeah, really nice interior. Great detailing just inside there. And as we hop out of here. So we have Chaos. So what is this? Is this for the flat ride? I don't know why I pretend. I'm, I'm not sure why I do it. This is pre-recorded. I'm not sure why I pretend that I don't know what it is. It's the spinning coaster. Spoiler alert. So let's have a walk down here, shall we, and see what we've got. So up we come. Great detailing all the way down this queue line. And then we come out. We've got the chair plane just to the left over there. And then as we carry on down here. Wow. You can barely see the station. It's that well hidden through all the foliage. But we've got a spinning coaster. So let's go for a ride, shall we? Penultimate ride of the park. Enjoy. I really liked that coaster. I think the spinning was controlled really, really well. It was not too erratic. It was, again, just like all the other rides, it was just perfect. Did exactly what it needed to. Just a great, great job. Yeah, loved it. Right, so we have one final coaster to go on. So this is the coaster that was created by Corvus. So... I'm, I, I believe this is a Gertschlau Infinity Coaster. Now, people are going to have to correct me if I'm wrong. Because I know it's a Typhoon Infinite, which would normally be a Gertschlau Infinity Coaster. But it's using the bikes. So I don't know if that still constitutes as a Gertschlau Infinity or not. You're going to have to let me know down below in the comments if I'm right on that or not. But we have the Temple Adventure. And this is a Corvus Coaster through and through. It really is. So let's have a walk down the queue line. It's sponsored by Corvus. Sponsored by? It was created by Corvus, let alone sponsored by. It was created, patent, packaged, sponsored by everything by Corvus. <laughs> but up we come, up to the station. And here we go. So the final ride of the park. Let's do it. Enjoy.
what a perfect way to end this spotlight. Yeah, Corvus, you absolutely smashed it with that coaster. As I said, it was your coaster through and through. I could very much tell that you were the one who designed that. You've got such a distinctive style when it comes to your coasters. And the way that you've managed to get it to drop as well. Like, just like 13. Yeah. Incredible. What a ride. And what a park. What a park. What can I say that can do this park justice? There isn't. It's amazing. I could have quite easily made this spotlight an hour and a half long. And just stopped and taken in every single little detail. There's going to have been things that I have missed throughout this park. It's just inevitable with a park of this nature. Like I said, a spotlight of a park like this just doesn't do it justice. I did the best that I could. If you own an Xbox, go and download it for yourselves. Just take it all in. Just be sucked in by this park. It's just incredible. I absolutely love it and flooded you smashed it once again yeah great 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 job you're gonna have to let me all know down below what you all think of this park i mean i haven't even touched upon the night lighting right here yeah the night lighting perfect as well didn't even need saying did it really just like the rest of the park perfect but yeah let me know down below in the comments what you all think how amazing was this park once again loved it but I'll be back in a couple of days for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. I will see you all then. Take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye, everybody!